Alex Marinelli slide, slide in and get if you joined us late and uh, you need recording privileges, please drop me a note in the chat and I will get you those recording privileges. Alex, can you hear me okay? Yep. All right, anyone, for, anyone with a question for Alex Marinelli, the uh, three-time All-American defending Big Ten champion, preseason ranked number two at 165, please raise your hand and we will get the uh, question started. Alex, the first question this afternoon from Cody Goodwin. Hey, Alex, uh, appreciate you guys doing this today. Um, Two-time defending Big Ten champ, right? Yeah. Um, uh, just uh, Tom was talking the other yesterday just about the idea of um, you know unfinished business, right? And I know that the, the ending last year was kind of out of everybody's control, but um, and you guys constantly preach about you know controlling what you can control, but you know the the, the season is here. There's a schedule now. Um, you know, and Tom talked about you know ensuring that we get to the finish. Um, I, how much do you guys maybe discuss just the idea of, of unfinished business and just making sure that you guys get that opportunity both on the map but also taking care of business off the map too to you know give yourself that best chance? Yeah, I think um, right now the coaches, you know, they're stressing um, control what you can control and, and where is your edge? You know, your edge is nutrition, sleep, um, and how you train and how you think. And I think when we have all those in line, um, we can be really um, – effective on the mat and I just I think Kemmer said it best it's just something that's you know we don't have to talk a whole lot about I mean it and we know and, and I think maybe with the freshmen um, coming in we need to bring it up um, you know that that we're we were gunning for that national title and they weren't in that thick of season with us and, and it's kind of hard to emulate that um, with those freshmen and get those the, get them seasoned but I feel like with the training cycle that we've been through and with um, the the coach at, the coaches um, putting us through like training. I just feel like, you know, we we know and and, and the coaches know that that we know that there's just unfinished business that we need to take care of. So, Alex, the next question from Isaac Goffin. Yeah, you know, from Big Ten opponents right away. Um, looks like a very tough schedule. And how do you think this team's mindset's going to be each week, knowing that it's all going to be tough matches? Yeah, I think. Um, you know, we, we have Nebraska coming up, and I, I've talked with a lot of my buddies and, and teammates, and we're just like, man, like Nebraska is a tough – I mean, they're a tough opponent. They're a super worthy opponent, and uh, we're, it's always a fun dual meet with them, and it's it's pretty pretty awesome that we get to start out with a Big Ten, Big Ten dual meet right off the bat. I mean, sometimes we have to face non-conference duels or, or people we have to travel. You know, sometimes we – years before we went to Kent State, um, you know, we, we had Chattanooga, but no, it's like we're going right into Big Ten – and uh, I think fans are excited about that. They're pumped up, and uh, you know it's it's worthy opponent every single match, and uh, I'm excited. Alex, the next question from KJ Pilcher. Hey, Alex. Uh, is there anything that changes in the approach, or, or is there anything that's altered with it being a condensed season? Just you know, essentially eight to ten weeks, twelve weeks. Um, and that's what it consists of. I think um, – I don't know if anything's altered. I think uh, the training schedule that we've been through um, so far, it's – we've we've had to slide a little bit, and Terry says that a lot, and, and Tom. We, we slide our, our training. Like, we're, we're not just going to, um, you know, train like there's a dual meet coming up when there wasn't, but we were training um, – in a way that you know maybe we brought our weight down at the end of the week and we're kind of emulating that that um, tournament time coming up and I just think that you know we're, we're doing what we need to do and uh, you know we don't need to change a whole lot I mean we're, we're expecting to do great things because we've been training the way we've been training the way I was been training for many many years so Alex the next question from Grant Becker Alex Kemmer talked sort of about that, the balance of the extra motivation because of the way things ended last year versus the thankfulness of having the opportunity to go through it this year and, and hopefully to get that opportunity you didn't get last year. Kind of how do you balance those things and how are they impacting you on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I think um, not dwelling on it too much that the national tournament got canceled. I mean, that's like the pinnacle, like Spencer said in his interview with the Hodge Trophy. It's like that's the pinnacle of college wrestling is to be a national champion, and it didn't happen. But it's like, what are you going to do about it? Are you just going to um, cry about it and not, not work out hard and just blame other people? Are you going to get up and work out and 
um, get better for for the next national tournament that can happen, and, and that's St. Louis, and that's what we're excited about. And I think um, you know that that is extra motivation for sure. I mean, we we have something to prove, and um, we ha we haven't won it since 2010, so it's you know it's another year. I mean, it's another year. So, Alex, the next question from Cody Goodwin. Um. When you got part of the program this year, Jaden Ironman. Um, how much? What, what have you guys kind of learned about him since he's been there? I know he's been there for you know almost a year now, but what's uh, what, what's it like having him as part of the program now? Yeah, well, he's sitting right right beside me, kind of. So I, I I won't build his head up too much, but uh, no, he's he's a uh, he's a guy that when the lights are on, he he's going. And I mean, whether it's in the practice room or on the on the mat, I know he's going to be putting on a show and. Uh, you know he's he's a guy that loves to compete. Um, he's he's awesome. He's funny. I mean he he brings a good vibe to the room and uh, he loves to just he loves to wrestle. To be honest, I mean it's it's hard to find those guys that are at that age that really want to still compete hard. And uh, I mean, and Jay Nyman's one of them. I mean he's he's he loves to compete and uh, and I just I love to see it. You know you love to bring in those guys. So. Yeah, and to, to follow up with that, uh, I, one of the things he's talked about is just the, the, the culture that you guys have at Iowa, and that really was one of the major reasons that kind of drew him in once he hit the portal. Um, what is it about the culture that you guys have been able to build that, I mean, is really starting to, I mean, really, really be attractive to some of these other guys that might think about changing schools or especially recruits? Um, I, what, what is it about, that, what, have, what have you guys been able to build and why is it so special? I just think, you know, it's for one our mentality. You know, we're, our culture about winning is totally different. I think um, we're obviously you know a powerhouse program, and we bring in really good recruits. But I think like just how we think about winning so much, and it's just a standard. It's the national title is the standard, and I think Jay Nyerman likes likes that because he wants to win. And then also our coaching staff. I mean, we have literally the best coaches in the world. Um, Tom and Terry Brands, Ryan Morningstar, Telford. They're they're the best. They do it right, and and I think. Guys see that they're seeing that, and and Jay Nyerman wanted that, and so um, you know it's and it's a fun environment. You you have so many guys that are really good. We're ranked, you know, number one in the nation. So and we're we're a big one big family. So I, I think guys are just wanting to be a part of the program. Alex, the final question for you this afternoon is from Grant Becker. Alex, it sounds like you listened and watched yesterday's press conference. I assume you heard. Coach Brands and the number of things that he was fired up about. I know. I mean, I know that's we see that from him weekly basis. I'm sure you guys see that a lot more. One, what's what's he been like during you know the last ten months here where you guys haven't been able to compete? And are are the things that he fired up about particular specifically the um, the people saying that you guys are ducking whoever or whatever that, that you can't wrestle? Are you guys fired up about those things too, or is that just something that he's said about? I don't I don't worry about you know what people are saying but um, I think Tom and Terry you know what what fuels me is that they're so steady in what they say I mean what he's saying to you guys he's saying to us I mean it's it's constant and it's consistent and I think you know it's crazy to see um, or it's not crazy to me but for you guys I mean it's just Tom's mentality it's it's what we see it's what we see every day and so that fires me up every day I hear it and uh, you know when I watch it I'm like, yep, I know that, I know that, and then it's just good to hear. It's it's really good for us to hear and, and to watch those interviews because Tom says things that you know we do need to be reminded of. We we're not ducking people. We we are wanting the best of the best, and and we're all, we are you know. And and Spencer Lee is deserving of the Hodge Trophy. You know, yeah, he didn't win the national title this year, but it got stripped from us. But you know, he is he is due for that. And and I told Spencer, I said, hey, I'm coming for it next year or this year. So. participant button at the bottom of your screen and raise your digital hand and we will work our way through the lineup um, again we'll start with Michael Kemmerer and behind him will be Marinelli Cassiope and Jaden Ironman not necessarily in that order but Michael can you hear me okay yep hear you good you guys hear me yeah I got you good okay anyone out there with a question for uh, Hawkeye three-time American 174 pounder Michael Kemmerer you can raise your hand and we'll get things started The first question from Cody Goodwin. Hey, Mike. Uh, appreciate you guys doing this today. 
what's the feeling like knowing that there's there's a schedule out you guys have been practicing it's been you know uh, nine months now but i mean you guys are finally going to get to wrestle here in you know a week and a half i mean that's got to be pretty thrilling considering everything that's been going on right yeah it's awesome i mean we love to compete we we're pretty much wrestling all year round getting better all year round so um but it's a lot of stuff wrestling other guys in the room right so now that we have competition coming up it feels good we always love to go out there and put that Iowa singlet on especially wrestling here at Carver Hawkeye Arena I mean you guys know it's the best atmosphere in the world and it's gonna look a little different maybe but um still going out there and wrestling in a place like that we're super excited Michael the next question from KJ Pilcher uh Michael thanks uh, uh for doing this what has the last nine or ten months really entailed with you not really having your regular routine uh, that you would normally have between seasons, what have you guys done to kind of make those improvements and, and strides from year to year? Yeah, I mean, obviously, right right after season was canceled last spring, things were pretty shut down. Things were slow, so we had to be super independent and really take it upon ourselves. And it was a lot of independence, really, at that time. And then, um, luckily, you know, we followed the protocol. We are able to start getting back into Carver Hawkeye Arena early enough and then from there it's just been um, you know pretty similar to to other years and other than the fact that we have to uh, you know be be smart with all the stuff going on but as far as the training's gone it's been awesome I mean still have a ton of good guys in the room we got a bunch of tough freshmen that came in now so uh, it feels like the room's better than ever it feels like it's always getting better and it's it's been a great process and you know, before you know it, here we are. We're, we got a dual meet coming up. And just to follow up, uh, you've dealt with some adversity over your career, especially uh, you know the last few years before last season. How has that helped you deal with what you what you faced since March? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think that stuff's helped a lot. I think just the program and the environment that we're in helps a lot for dealing with stuff like that. I mean, adversity. We we kind of pride ourselves on on being the strongest one when adversity hits and something bad happens and I feel like the guys on our team and our program are you know we're the we're the people leading leading the way leading the ship and uh, we kind of pride ourselves on leading really the university the state of Iowa through times like this we want to be strong and keep our our high standard and that's what we've done we've um, you know we've gotten better every day with what we could and like I said, here we are now, and we're still holding that standard uh, nine months later, however long it's been since COVID began. Michael, the next question from Anna Kaiser. Hey, um, you mentioned that things might look and feel a little different in Carver, especially with no fans. Um, what are some advantages and disadvantages you feel to that, not only um, in your home arena, but when you go on the road to places like Penn State? Yeah, um, I mean, it's hard to say. I think it's just going to be a lot, a lot different as, in that you're not hearing, hearing the super loud crowd right on top of you. But um, you know, we always say wrestling is wrestling, whether it's folk style or freestyle, or whether it's in the practice room or you know you're wrestling a match. Maybe things change a little bit, but at the same time, it's you have an opponent right in front of you, and and you've been wrestling your whole life. And we've wrestled, we've wrestled in. Uh, We've wrestled in pretty empty gyms, probably depending on where we came from. So, um, you know, we've wrestled in pretty much every atmosphere. So this is just another atmosphere, I guess you can add to the resume. I mean, how many people have come through the Iowa wrestling program and wrestled in in an empty Carver Hawkeye Arena, or rather, empty Carver Hawkeye Arena? So we're just, uh, you know, we're getting more and more experiences. Michael, the next question from Joey Donye. Hey, Michael, um, just wanted to, to ask you about, you know, going back to last spring, having the opportunity to compete for a national championship taken away from you. Have you come to peace with, with the, the disappointment of all of that? How did you do it? And, and how did that experience kind of change your outlook on things as you get ready for a new season here to start in just a few days? Yeah, I mean, I think collectively we, we handled it well and we handled it pretty quickly I mean once once it was done what's done is done and we were moving forward so from there it was just to the next thing and it's always kind of about the next thing and getting better and getting ready for the next thing so 
Um, so yeah, now going forward, it's okay. What, what's the opportunities ahead of me? And, you know, we got opportunities coming up here this month, next month through March. So, uh, it's always just really looking at that next opportunity and being ready for it and training for it. And, um, you know, don't, you know, what's the saying, the rear view mirrors, uh, smaller than the windshield or something like that. You know, that's a good saying because that's, that's kind of how we look at, it. you know, we're looking for, we're not looking what's behind us. We're always looking at what's ahead of us. Michael, the next question from Grant Becker. Michael, I know you guys are always highly motivated, but I mean, the way that things went down last year, kind of losing an opportunity that you guys had given yourselves this great chance to win a national championship for you, for a couple other guys on your team to go out and be national champions. Is there an added motivation this year because of what you were denied last year by the circumstances? Yeah, I mean, I'd say probably a little added motivation, but also Matt uh, added thankfulness, really. I mean, you got to be thankful every time you can step out on the mat. And, um, you know, you just always think that that's a guarantee that you're going to be able to go out and, and just keep wrestling. And it just, it just put it in perspective, like, wow, we actually got that taken away from us. So now it's like, all right, we got something coming up. All the more reason to prepare for it, all the more reason to take in every – aspect of the experience because you just don't know when opportunities are going to be there and when they're not so like I was saying earlier I mean the next opportunity it just always makes you that much more excited now for the next opportunity because you just never know what can happen Michael the next question from Cody Goodwin uh, Tom talked yesterday just about the, the idea of unfinished business um and i know you you just kind of answered a question along those same lines but i mean is that something that you guys discuss at all or is it more about just kind of taking advantage of the opportunity which i know is a message that you guys like to preach regardless of the year yeah i mean i don't know if it's even something that we really have to talk about that much it's kind of understood i mean we know the way la things finished last year that um it, it just kind of leaves a, a taste in your mouth that uh you know, it, it sticks with you a little bit. So I think we all kind of understand that. And, yeah, the unfinished business thing, that's a good way to describe it. I mean, I think we got a lot of motivated guys that didn't get to wrestle the national tournament last year. And um, so then you got some really, really motivated guys now. The, the motivation this year, or I guess entering this year compared to last year, is it, is it the same? Is it slightly different? What, what's the vibe like? Um. I, I would say we're it's it's probably similar, probably a little bit more just because we haven't had as many opportunities to compete. You know, usually, um, you know, you start that season back in November, and uh, right now we're we're just starting competing dual meets in January. So it's like, all right, we've been training here, we're we're in shape, we're ready to go, and we're kind of chomping at the bit. So I think we're excited, and we know that it is a more of a sprint of a season, a shorter season. So we got to be ready to go when we step on that line for that first dual meet and from then on. So we're super excited. All right, Michael, your final question this afternoon from Steve Batterson. How, how does that sprint of the season change things in, in terms of the way you train, in terms of the way things set up uh, heading into March? Yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest thing is you don't, you don't have the, the time. When I would say you never really have the time to do this, but if you are – thinking that you have time to kind of just work your way into, into the swing of things and then be ready to go by March. You can't really do that this year. you got to be ready to go from the get-go and have your A game from the start, really, and then just keep building from there. So, um, so yeah, it's a shorter season, but um, we got we got Big Ten wrestling, and you know, everyone knows Big Ten wrestling is where it's at, so um, we're ready to go. Does it put more of an emphasis on the duels and, and, and being ready uh, from one week to the next? Um, I, I we always pride ourselves on being ready to go for yeah. for every time we step on the mat, whether it's you know the the first thing back in November or whether it's January, February, it doesn't really matter. We're always priding ourselves on stepping on that line, ready to go. So, um, so that's really what's about. Jane, welcome. If you have a question for. Three-time All-American at the University of Missouri, top rank at 141 pounds, Jaden Ironman. Please raise your hand, and we will make our way through the lineup. So, questions for Jaden.
Jaden, the first question this afternoon from Tyler Devine. Jaden, you've been here for a while. You, you know, you're finally about to get on the mat as a Hawkeye. Have you thought about how kind of strange it is that your first meet as a Hawkeye is against your dad's alma mater? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm excited. You know, I never, uh, I only competed against Nebraska once in my career, and that was at Nationals, uh, my redshirt freshman year, I believe. And I'm just excited. You know, I give them a little uh, hit there and there for it. But um, I'm excited to just go out there and be able to finally compete for the uh, Hawkeyes. Jaden, the next question from KJ Pilcher. Hi, Jaden. Uh, I, I know this will be your first uh, official match with uh, the Hawkeyes, but what did wrestling at the U.S. Nationals and uh, the Hawkeyes uh, Wrestling Club Showdown, what did that do for you, uh, especially with this break before the start of the season? Yeah, it was great to finally get some matches in before the uh, season started. You know, usually we start in November, and that was kind of around the time we were competing. So it was nothing new to me, but it was good just to – it had been since December of 2019 since I competed. So it was good to just get out there and uh, blow them lungs out and try to, you know – you know, I went in the mindset with winning, but that wasn't uh, able to happen. So it was the next best thing for me, and I took fifth. Um, I battled back. You know, there was a lot of matches. And then I had to turn it around in three weeks and wrestle the uh, defending Olympic champion. So it was just great to get those matches in. I was blessed to be able to compete. So I'm just excited to get the season rolling. Jaden, the next question from Cody Goodwin. Hey, Jaden. I uh, appreciate you guys doing this. Um, I, I, dozens of reasons why you decided to come to Iowa. Um, but now that you've been here and you've been with the guys and you've been part of the program, um, what has really kind of been your favorite part about being up here? Um, my favorite part would have to be, like, the practices. Like, they really – the coaches' staff – the coaches' staff is, like, one of the best in the world, like Marinelli said. And they really work with their athletes here, like – um, our practices are built around us and how we want to feel by the end of competition. You know, we're trying to peak and not really kill ourselves at the beginning, but um, it's really great, the practices. And it's every day you're going to have a war. There's not one guy that's going to bow down to you. You know, you have guys that are ready to fight for that lineup spot, and that just makes everybody better because they're going to push each other to the top. Yeah, and to follow up real quickly, just the, this culture that I know that you kind of wanted to be a part of, um, what was it, I mean, kind of watching it from afar, what was it about it that really was attractive to you? Um, whenever you see them do interviews and talk about it, it's never I, I, I. It's always we we have set out to do this or we're going to do this together. You know, we have each other's back. So it's a family atmosphere, and it's they're here together. They're supporting each other, and that's what – I love, you know, they're going to go out there and fight for each other, not just for themselves. Jaden, the next question from Isaac Goffin. Hi, Jaden. Um, staying close friends on a day-to-day -day basis, and what's the team like especially since, like, you've been fired up recently? Oh, it's great. I love them. You know, uh, they've tr helped me out tremendously with my wrestling style, um, trying to get me to become more, you know, not more basic, but – get my legs back and then my offense and uh, my scrambling ability starts to open up later in the match when the guy's really tired. So that helps me out and then, you know, pushing my pace every single day to try to get to where I can go for seven minutes hard. And then having Tom uh, and Terry helping me, you know, bring my weight down. Like it's been, this has been the easiest weight cut of my life. Um, and I've done it so well. Um, I'm walking around probably like 44, 45 now and I'm still eating three meals a day. I'm still getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but I'm also building my shape where I'm leaning out, and I'm going to become like a uh, – we're going to be a fine-tuned army come uh, January 15th. Jaden, the next question from Anna Kaiser. Yeah, coming into the Big Ten and getting to see some really dominant wrestlers every single week now um, through the end of the season, how does that build both you individually and your team up to reach your goals um, in March? Yeah, we just have to take uh, every day as a uh, step for us. You know, every day is a goal for us to reach where we want to be uh, come March 20th at the last day of nationals. 
and it's not looking past each duel it's taking every duel that is in front of us serious as the next and i feel like once we do that we're just gonna keep steamrolling and keep going uh week after week and day after day and then finally we're gonna see where we're at come march 20th jade and the next question from grant becker and you just talked about when you hear when you in the past heard the hawkeyes talking to press conferences and things like that talking about we 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 I imagine you listened to Coach Brands yesterday and you heard him fired up. I mean, I imagine he's a little bit bottled up. He hasn't talked to us as much lately. But what are you thinking as you're hearing him and the passion he's got in sort of this random room somewhere in early January? Yeah, um, I love the passion that they have. You know, um, every day before practice, they give us our, you know, little speech. And it's every day. We, it's like it just fires me up to where, like, I want to run through a brick wall for them because, like, that's what the leadership you want is to have them to where – you have you 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 feel like your athletes like the coaches have your back and that's a great feeling for us and they're going to go to war for us no matter what and that's what i really love jade and the next question from cody goodwin uh i, I just was if you heard tom you know talking about the idea of unfinished business and i asked you know Marin Nelly and Kemmer similar variations of this question but just you know you being you know kind of a new guy and um, was kind of watching them go through it maybe from a little bit of a distance last year. What, what's it like coming into, um, you know, joining this team, this program that's, you know, that, that, that that's where their sights are at. Like yeah. there's, you know, you understand kind of what the goals are as soon as you step in that room. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's definitely unfinished business, you know. Even though that I wasn't part of the team last year, like I feel like I have unfinished business there too, you know. Uh, falling short, you know, nationals and the semis two years in a row and then the quarters the year before that to the eventual national champ it was just I feel like I have unfinished on my plate and then joining the team this year being put into the lineup it's like we have unfinished business to where we were going to dominate the national tournament last year we're going to dominate it this year we're going to dominate it the next year we're going to try to just keep this 2020 rolling to where this 2020 to 2030 we're just going to try to win as many national titles as we can and I believe that's truly like what we're capable of. All right, if there are no further questions for Jaden Ironman, Jaden, we thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you. We're here. Tony, can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. All right, if anyone out there has a question for All-American heavyweight Tony Cassiope, preseason ranked number three in the country, raise your hand and we will work our way down the lineup. Tony Cassiope, the first question this afternoon for you is from Cody Goodwin. Hey, Tony, appreciate you guys doing this. Um, also, nice hair. I don't think it was ever that long. <laughs> no, it hasn't been. Um, what was the hardest part of the last nine months for you um, personally? Um, I don't know. It was it was difficult when we weren't really, you know, able to get into Carver and get the workouts we really wanted to get, you know, and obviously NCAAs being canceled and all that was suboptimal, but, you know, you just got to move on and be ready for this year. Tony, the next question from Grant Becker. I know you guys have an all Big Ten schedule, but you get Minnesota and Michigan in the first month of the season here, really the first two weeks of the season. When you saw that on the schedule, were you pretty excited knowing what's waiting for you in those two matches? Oh, yeah. You know, I've got my eyes on those guys. I've had my eyes on those guys. I want to be the best there is in the nation and best in the world. And, you know, those guys are guys who got the best of me last year. So I've been working hard, you know, doing everything I can to close that gap and overcome them what is what is the margin because it's not a big one obviously between you and those two guys how do you close that um you know just working on fundamentals working on where i'm good and where i need to get better every day with tom terry telfer morningstar you know they've all got different things dennis to show me to work on that will help me close that gap Tony, the next question from Cody Goodwin. Um, I, they mentioned, you know, Minnesota and Michigan. Um, but I, at the showdown, um, you were able to get your hands on uh, Nick Kuzdowski, who's, you know, he's, he's kind of been a heavyweight rep for the U.S. for the, the better part of the last four years. What what, what was some ultimate takeaways uh, from getting to wrestle a guy like him um, who's as seasoned and as successful as he's, he's been? Um, really just focus on fundamental wrestling. You know, I, I got out of position in that match and it cost me because he got right into his lace and you know took me through and I was I felt you know like I 
am on that level. I can wrestle with that guy. I, can, I know I can. And, you know, I just need to wrestle my match, my fundamental positions, and not, you know, let him get me in that position where he did. Tony, I'll pop in here with a question. I've seen you in the room, and it looks to me like, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're a little bit leaner than you were a year ago. Um, is that true? And, you know, whether it's true or not, what did you do to, you know, change your body over the last nine months? Um, my weight's about the same as it's been. You know, I've just been lifting hard, wrestling hard, you know, running, all that, and just focused on my wrestling and getting myself optimal. You know, and that's really what I've always focused on, so. You know, it's just been, I've had a lot of time to do some good training and I've been making the most of it. Tony, we'll go back to Cody Goodwin. Um, I, I know we talked a little bit after after your re last year, we talked a little bit about what you maybe learned from your redshirt year. Um, were there, what were maybe some of the major takeaways? I know you talked about wrestling fundamentally sound against Gwiz, but um, what were, were there larger takeaways or was that maybe similar to what you learned after going through a full year in the, in the actual lineup? Yeah, I mean that's that's really a big focus for me is my fundamental wrestling because, you know, I'm I'm strong, I'm fast, I'm athletic, and I can, you know, do a lot of good things. But I'll get I'll put myself out of position sometimes where I don't need to be. But you know, I would maybe get away with it before because I was just more athletic or you know, could could get away with it. But I can't do that. I need to focus fundamental positions, and wrestle hard seven minutes my positions. Tony the question from Grant Becker. So you promised us last year at Media Day that you were going to be an entertaining wrestler. You certainly delivered on that. But it, it's going to be a little different this year, right, with no crowds, whether that's Carver Hawkeyes, you know, Thousand Strong cheering for you, or somewhere else where they're booing you. Is that How does that change kind of the energy of a match that you're in in an empty room? Um, that doesn't really change anything for me. I don't focus on that stuff. It's, you know, it's just a wrestling mat. It's a wrestling circle. I'm going to put my foot on that line, and I'm going to wrestle like I always do. Doesn't matter if there's tons of people or nobody. I'm, you know, it's my wrestling and my wrestling is entertaining, not for necessarily for the crowd, but for myself because that's how I want to wrestle. Tony, the next question from Cody Goodwin. I asked the other three some variation of this question, but Tom talked yesterday just about the idea of unfinished business, and um, you know, it sounds like just talking with them that it's kind of an unspoken thing in the room, in the locker room, just around the program. Um, I, can you maybe feel that vibe, or, or what is kind of the motivation coming into this year? Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's any different because we're we're always you know have our eyes set on that goal of being NCAA champions. You know, like obviously last year we didn't get the chance to compete, but I think we all moved pretty quickly on to we gotta bring it next year. It's all about next year already. You know, right after all everything happened, Tom's like. Stay ready. Maybe maybe they'll move the NCAs. If not, you're ready for next year. You know, it was just just ready, ready, ready. You know, always looking to the next thing. The next thing's the most important thing. All right. If there are no further questions from for Tony Cassiope, Tony, I thank you for your time this afternoon.